how can I safeguard myself so that I am walking by faith and not by sight? How do I seek the Holy Ghost and be responsive to His guidance when the voice of the flesh is still so loud in my life? To do this, I believe that we need to yield to the Holy Spirit. And what I mean by yield is, you have to realize that on your own, you cannot defeat the carnal man with your own strength. However, that doesn't mean that you don't try. It means you try with the help. You try with the assistance. You try with the empowering strength that the Holy Spirit gives you. You don't rely on your own strength, but you lean on the Holy Spirit. Philippians 1 verse 6 says, Being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. The Amplified Version says, I am convinced and confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will continue to perfect and complete it until the day of Christ Jesus, the time of his return. Take a moment and consider, what does the Bible mean when it says, this very thing? What is this very thing? Why should we be confident of it? Why is this very thing so important that it's associated with the beginning of a good work that will be completed until the day of Jesus? Saints, I believe that when the Bible talks about this very thing, it's talking about your salvation. And the reason I believe this is because when you are saved and when you accept Jesus Christ into your heart, you don't automatically become detached from your flesh. You don't automatically become this perfect person who never gets angry or upset. That's not the case. You need to work on your salvation by seeking more of Jesus Christ, by meditating on His Word, by pursuing a closer relationship with Him, by yielding to the Holy Spirit. Your salvation never stops. That's why Philippians chapter 1 verse 6 says, Being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it. Will complete it. Your salvation is not complete until the day of Jesus Christ's return. Philippians 2 verse 12 says, Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, so now, not only as in my presence, but much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Did you hear that? The Bible tells you to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Do you know what this means? It means you need to continue to work out your salvation to cultivate it, to bring it to full effect, to actively pursue spiritual maturity with the fear of God. And as you do this, do it with caution because your eternal destiny depends on it. Once you are saved and born again, there is no curtain call or final whistle. Once you are saved and born again, that is just the beginning. The beginning of a good work. The beginning of the good fight of faith. The beginning of running a good race. The beginning of discovering the kingdom of God, which we are all called to seek first. And now, let us pray. Dear Lord Jesus, I thank you for saving me. I thank you for your most wonderful sacrifice on the cross. On Calvary, you took my sins even though you were innocent. 
On the cross, Father, you stood in my place and took the verdict of guilty all so that I could be saved. Thank you so much for your sacrifice. I pray, Lord Jesus, that as I work out my salvation with fear and trembling, as your word says in Philippians 2 and 12, may you help me. Help me to get closer and closer to you. Help me not to fall into the ways of this world. May the Holy Spirit keep me from backsliding. Fill me with a holy fire, a righteous desire, and a pure passion, Lord. Cover me and conceal me with your blood, King Jesus. Your word tells me in Proverbs 4, verse 23, Watch over your heart with all diligence. From it flow the springs of life. Help me to guard over my heart, King Jesus. Help me to be alert and spot anything that may cause me to fall into sin. Lord, your word encourages me in Ephesians 4, verse 22, to put off the old man that is corrupt and filled with deceitful lusts and to walk in my knowledge of you. I want to live in complete obedience to your word. And I realize that if I try to do this on my own, then I am weak. I need your grace and forgiveness, Master, because for too long I have allowed sins to become lifelong habits that are now so hard to break with my own strength. Forgive me, Lord, because too many times I have sought to justify sin and convince myself that they are only little sins. But Lord, I want to take heed of your call to put away these old ways. I pray for redemption, Father. Please forgive me for opening my heart to lustful desires and allowing anger and bitterness to envelop my spirit. Forgive me for giving place in my life to things that aren't pleasing to you. I submit all these old ways to you now in the name of Jesus and I humbly seek your grace to renew my mind. Lord, please give me the strength that I need to defeat these old habits and tendencies. I am thankful for your, your assurance in 2 Corinthians 12, verse 9, which says, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. I praise your name for this comforting promise. I know that your power is made perfect in my weakness. So I do not boast in my sin, but I boast in you who works in my faults to make me more like you. I boast in my weakness, Lord Jesus, because when I am weak, you are strong. Help me not to be shaken or to stagger in my faith, but instead to be firm on the foundation that is your word. I thank you for listening to my prayer. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.